This is episode 150 of the Gold Squadron Podcast. I'm your host, Dion Morales, and today I'm joined by Marcel. Lockdown has stolen all my ideas for bad nicknames, Manzano. Why even try? Will have ships to fly, want to put them on the table, Hagwood. Let me in. Let me into those tables. And Ryan, insert funny phrase here. With Marcel, running out of ideas, needs things. <laughs> well, um, we're, we're going to hopefully give you some ideas, some, you know, some inspiration. Uh, we can't go any farther without saying the fact that this is our 150th episode of the podcast. That's kind of crazy to think about where this podcast has come from. So, uh, yeah. So welcome. Thank you for being on this journey with us. And um, I think that uh, the 100th and 50th episode will be the best one yet. We need more hype than that, man. Like gunboats in the chat. <laughs> I was trying to be like humble brag, you know? I was trying to be... All right. Yeah. Chat wants to be excited. <laughs> we want the excitement. Be be excited. Get pumped. All right. So um, now he, here's here's a here's a question. I wonder who out there, and and be honest, chat. All right. And there's no way for me to check this. I wonder if anybody out there has listened to all 150 of the episodes. I'm curious. I'm curious. So. Just something that comes to mind. I don't know if, if you're out there. Let us know. That'd be great. <laughs> Man, do the math on that. The average episode hours, and then how many episodes you've watched, and then you get to figure out how many hours you've listened to Dion Morales. <laughs> we actually have somebody. We got a first timer right here, MD Towley in the chat. It's my first time. Well, welcome, welcome. You're part of the family. Here's some spaghetti. All right. Anyway. I don't know why I said that. I'm tired. We're, we're moving on. A spaghetti. All right. Announcements and news. So if you hadn't heard, we are, we're doing a thing, okay? The Space Jam Tournament, all right? The Space Jam Tournament. Uh, we announced it a couple of days ago, and it's already sold out. But we have to talk about it because I said we were going to do it, and I was going to announce it, and it sold out. In 29 hours, gone. We put up 148 tickets. All right, this wasn't like a like a 16 person tournament. 148. I thought to myself, like, ah, may, maybe a couple people will, will be interested. Maybe we'll get like 50. All of them are gone, and we even have a wait list going. So um, that's really cool. I just want to take a second and say thank you to everybody who signed up. And uh, just to remind you guys that make sure that you're reading all the documentation in order for this to work. You got to follow all the steps. Um, and one thing I got to mention, okay, I sent I sent out another email today with like even more specific instructions, step by step. Will, you were talking about my step by step instructions. You thought they were pretty good? Yeah, I like to. I like the hand holding. Uh, please, <laughs> please just tell me what to do so I can play in the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, as of right now, though, we got to talk about something because I said that there is a uh, there is a wait list, right? So, if you don't complete, and, and this is in the documentation when you when you bought your ticket and everything like that, if you don't complete all the steps, you're dropped from the tournament without a refund. Okay. And the reason you might be thinking, Mr. Dion, that seems really harsh. This is for two reasons. You put some skin in the game. Like you're going to put the 20 bucks in. You, you best follow all directions so that we can make sure that everybody is there and, and ready to go. If you don't follow all the steps, you're inconveniencing your opponent and all that stuff. Now, some people maybe are just waiting. But as of right now, you can actually see on the screen, 113 people have followed the directions. Awesome. There's, what is that? 35 people right now are either waiting to do it later because they feel like doing it later or have not read the documentation I've sent them. So as of right now, if it went, you know, if the tournament was tomorrow, we'd have 35 tickets available. So what I'm telling you is that if you want to be on the wait list, go ahead, sign up on the wait list. And if you signed up for the, uh, the tournament and you haven't done all the steps, 
do all the steps. And if you have any questions, just email me after you read all the stuff. All right, so super excited about that. All kinds of prizes. If you didn't see the prizes, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Let, let's let's just show let's just show some of this stuff off. Look at all that info, all the details. All right, we got faction prizes, guys. We got uh, top sixty four. Get some awesome frosted space jam tokens. Everybody is getting a Captain Seavor frosted clear card. Uh, top sixteen gets the space jammed T shirt. That's the official T shirt of the event. Those are available for sale if you'd like them. Top eight get these transparent frosted blue templates. Oh, so pretty all right you get to the top four you get a district foundry box with the space jam uh logo the gsp space jam logo super awesome and oh wait i had updated this let me go ahead let me go ahead and refresh this page it didn't go through hold on there is a picture of the belt oh no vamp somebody you vamp it. you gotta get it <laughs> so there's a, i think last time i uh, i checked you said there was a uh, 35 people on the wait list so it's gonna be like a like a black market thing. So I'm gonna put up uh, on the uh, X-wing trade. Not transferable, bro. Page. Not transferable. Like, come on, come on. Uh, just make it like an auction. Like, like oh, I'm taking 100. Taking 100. Taking 100. Taking 100. 30, 30, 30, 30. Okay, we got a buyer over there. 140, 140, 140. Um, and sold. Yeah, I think. Yeah, and I'll that... ship uh, a new Boo Fighter with it. <laughs> All right, so I don't know why that preview. I think it's my cache, but there, there it is, right there. There's a preview to the uh, the belt, the championship belt that you get to keep. I will tell you, I gotta call out the Minox. Oh, sorry, they're not called. I don't know whatever they're called now, the right? The Flynox. Now, okay. The Flynox. Not specifically the podcast, but like the group of players that play together. Mm. Okay, um, not currently because you know all the stuff's going on, but. Um, Right, they 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 went and tried to try to try to troll my posts. I'm so excited, so excited about this championship belt. They're like, congratulations on having the second best X-wing championship belt. And they posted this belt of that they pass around, okay, between them for like their monthly tournaments. Which I'm like, hey, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool, except the fact that this one you get to keep. Okay, there's no passing. Once it's yours, it's yours forever. It has the year on it and everything. I didn't make it so that it was, you know, uh, interchangeable. Maybe could have saved myself some money in the future. But I decided, no, you get to keep the trophy. All right. And remember, that's just a uh, a prototype picture. It does have like the belt holes in it and stuff like that. And um, if you're a little larger, that's all right. Just more to love, and you just put it on your shoulder. That's all the, what the cool kids do anyway. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you, I, you, I, I still think you can gotta put it like John Cena's old belt uh, with the bling and then <laughs> the spinning rim effect. So you just take the jam and you do. So we, we didn't quite have the budget for that. Um, maybe, maybe for the next one. Hey, maybe. Maybe for the next one. <laughs> maybe, now, he, maybe the Europeans get it. Ah, uh, and actually, you know, you're so good at transitions. Why are you so good at transitions? Because, because I'm just good like that. That's right. So here's the thing. My mama raised uh, me right. <laughs> a lot of people were asking, uh, especially those that the time is like not super convenient. Mind you, I will tell you, we have some hardcore. We got some Australians signed up for this event. We got some Europeans, not like just like from England. We got some like Eastern European guys who are signed up where they're going to be like starting this event at like the butt crack of dawn. Uh, but they want to play, which is awesome. But um, I'm pretty sure, assuming assuming that uh, everything goes well and to my expectations, and I really, really, uh, and, and I like the way it goes, we will run another one of these in the opposite time zone set, okay? So that's the plan there. So those of you guys who are on the other side of the world, you guys are going to get some love, some Gold Squadron love. We'll have... The same prizes, okay, and uh, yeah, that's that's going to be the, the the plan to make sure that as many people that want to play get an opportunity to play. And if you want to double dip, you can go ahead and double dip too. That's fine. But uh, I'm gonna try to do my best to kind of let the like Europeans, Australia, you know, that area of the world know first before I let it out for everybody, just to uh, make sure they have a chance as well. 
that's going to be an interesting. But you know what? I've already slept inside their time zone. I should be fine, right? That's how that's how that works, right? Sure. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go ahead and uh, and move on here to our next set of announcements. Uh, we talked about that. Oh, the judges. So here's the thing. People were asking, like, like how serious is this event? It's like super serious, guys. Like we are. The idea is that I want this to feel. Obviously, it's through a computer, but I want this to feel that level of competition that if Adepticon would have happened, if these premier events that aren't happening during the stretch of time would have happened that level of competition and because of that i got two premier level judges that are going to be on here so d yoon is going to be our marshal for the event okay we'll talk about that for people the players who are signed up how we're going to deal with getting judge calls and all that and then we also have Michael Juris, who was the uh, one of our locals, who was what an awesome judge, and also he was the head judge at World. So, um, so two premier level judges are going to be um, over this uh, this event. They're going to be there for basically rules questions. TTS has all the you know arc and range things, so you're not going to be calling uh, for that. You'll be calling a judge for rules, interactions, and, and other things that you you may be concerned about during your game. We have two judges available for you there, and uh, if, if it turns out we need another, we'll figure that out as we go along. We can, uh, we can make it happen. Uh, next thing, uh, FFG had announced uh, on their Facebook that, of course, because of you know current uh, COVID nineteen and all that, that they've updated their um, their upcoming product pages with new dates. So we'll go ahead and uh, and just take a peek at the the what what we really care about, which of course is the uh, the X wing side of that. So you see that the uh, the Psy shuttle, the Lat, and the HMP dro droid gunship uh, both. Uh, sorry, all all three of them say that uh, that their U.S. release date is expected to be September. We'll see if that actually happens, but right now it's estimated for September. Do you guys think that's going to end up being on time? Yeah, I think uh, September's. I mean, doesn't sound unreasonable. I think um, end of July, early August, things getting released around that time. I think should be should be fine. I think. Definitely if it's product, because product, even if it doesn't get, you know, I mean, you can still get product. You can still get it delivered. There's there's way to deliver it. But, um, yeah, I, I don't see why not. Yeah, unlike how the boat used to function in the past, uh, I think FFG has been pretty spot on lately about its release time. So uh, if they're confident enough to give an update, it's probably pretty serious. Yeah, and September's, that that's a good amount of buffer times so that they didn't put something that was too close to now and not something that's too far away it coincidentally september tends to be a common release month because the month before they tend to do the early release at gen con if that still happens as well i think it was late Jeez. april Sorry, I was gonna. Uh, sorry, I, got, I muted myself in the in the stream. You said was the original release date April? You guys said, I think late April, early May, actually. Yeah. All right. So, I'm interested to know, like, because FFG that would mean that if they were planning on releasing it then, that I wonder if at some point, once hopefully our world goes back to normal, we end up getting like a like either a double wave release or some type of like maybe two waves closer together they were talking about that whole like aces packs thing yeah but anyway uh that's that now this is in the news but also more of a discussion point uh for us so um i don't know so the the from my knowledge the upcoming gsp space jam will be the largest like one day of people playing X-Wing online for an organized event for X-Wing that has happened, um, which hopefully it works out. Uh, but I also found it interesting that that same, that I think it was like the same day or the day before um, FFG had posted on their Facebook and I actually had trouble finding the post again, but I know I did read it, that they actually asked a question 
on their Facebook asking, "Would do you think it's a good idea for us to try to embrace digital uh, events like that? Um, and before I, I talk about kind of what were some of the opinions uh, that I saw in the comment section, what are your guys' thoughts on FFG uh, maybe getting involved in all that? Ryan, you go ahead, take the floor first. I think it's really interesting. Um, it's, I, I, I guess they're allowed to entertain this at, at publicly uh, in that regard. Uh, I would think the last time we were aware that according to their... I forgot what the official documentation was, but it dealt with everything that we all like went crazy over about six or eight months ago that dealt with all the clauses and uh, copyright and all that fun stuff and using uh, the games and the licenses outside of FFG directly. And then people were concerned about things like Vassal continuing or able to continue and uh, all the podcasts had to think about their alternate art cards, producing anything like that. Uh, so maybe they've opened it up a little bit to consider. Um, obviously this situation has opened a lot of potential things up that deal with online capabilities for any aspect in the world right now. So why not games? What do you think, Will? Ooh, I'm, I interestingly, as I'm normally very optimistic, but this is uh, one thing that I might actually be uh, pessimistic about. Um, I feel like they might actually just muddy the waters, uh, make it more complicated. Uh, not like them running a tournament would be complicated. That uh, can be simplified. Uh, but uh, t um, starting to get like a, uh, like official deals with these different uh, modding communities and like Vassal, TTS, things like that, uh, Fly Casual, uh, all the kind of online things. Uh, once they like uh, dip their toes into it, they might, what do I say? Uh, like bully, <laughs> uh, bully these uh, organizations and um, you know, the people who make them into wanting something out of it um hopefully that wouldn't be the case obviously um but i could see it um being more troubled than it's worth um to get them like officially involved but i'm we would have to i guess i would want more information on what what they would even plan to do and what do you think marcel I, I tend to agree a little bit with volume. The the biggest issue I think for them is the with with the licensing. If it was their own game that they they trademarked themselves and they created themselves, then it would make it a little bit easier for them to get um, you know as creative as they want to get with with digital platforms. The problem is when you're dealing with the Star Wars and with the Disney license, and you're going to digitize it, then that has to go through everything, and if um, that everything that that goes into the copywriting and and what's within their contract or what they're actually um paying for and getting out of that license and then if they do do it then they're they're they have to again for trademark and for copywriting reasons they would have to like acknowledge that tabletop simulators mods and vassal mods uh unless they created their own standalone um it, it would just you know, to William's point, it would muddy things up. Now, what they can do is, uh, in order to support the community in times when, when you know, for whatever reasons, games can't be played in person or they have to be canceled, excuse me, what they can do is they, they can support, like many other companies do, um, independent organizers like, you know, like Gold Squadron or, you know, some of the other excuse me, so many other places that are making tournaments happen, just support them in, in some way, you know, uh, either support them with materials that they had planned to send out for Adepticon and other things that are you know, basically probably going to go to waste uh, and not get used up. Same thing for like the regional kits and things like that, if they already had those and just support the events in that way and keep the enthusiasm up, uh, maybe even participate in, um, you know, some you know something that's community run, but not officially endorsing it. Just just 
um, you know, the same way that any company, if, you know, if you work in marketing or if you work in sales, you know that you know, um, if you're running, if you if you have a product in an industry, whenever somebody is running a, a, an event for that industry, for example, I used to be in the automotive industry, people that ran car shows would always uh, call on us and say, hey, do you have stickers? Do you have this? So we can hand out pass out at our car show it's similar similar thing with um x-wing you're not really endorsing an event you're not really allowing or signing off um that you're you're in agreement with copyrights and that they're following all the rules it's really more just like hey we're running this event that um you know do you want to promote it do you want to promote yourself in my event and just give out you know some of the tchotchkes and some of the other things that some of the other swag that they had planned out that it's just going to sit in the warehouse now. Could you see even maybe like like special um, t uh, tournament kits uh, for uh, this time, like uh, like going out of the way and creating something new rather than using old stuff? I'm trying to think of like uh, I know they like do some special things for the CAC. But I think the CAC uh, campaign against cancer uh, does have that kind of licensing deal with them. Am I wrong about that? It's not necessarily a licensing deal, from my understanding. It's that, like, um, they are just, if, I mean, they've even done it with other community events. You just kind of ask, and they do it through the banner of uh, community support, is what they say. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, I see uh, Luke's, uh, Luke's knows a lot more about it than I do. Yeah. Um, and it says that they only get the previous stuff. Cool. Well, so what, one of the, a lot of what you guys said already is what I was seeing in the comments. And a lot of the worry, right, is we do have two amazing online platforms right now, TTS and Vassal, with people behind them um, who've created them, who've done a lot of work, and they have established player bases. Ideally, like Marcel was saying, if it was their own IP, they'd just be able to roll into it, right? It's like, hey, let's just do this on TTS. Let's just do this on Vassal. And the community would be like, okay. I think the biggest risk is if they go out and try to publish something themselves, it has to be as good, if not better, actually, I'd have to argue that it probably just has to be downright better than either of those platforms so that the, the community goes, oh, that's objectively better. I get it. Let's use it. Now, and I think Luke had put this in the uh, Luke Carrington Gold Squadron Pancast, by the way, had put this in the chat saying, how does FFG make money off of it? Now, I've heard a couple of different... Um, like not, I don't want to call them business plans, but a couple of different like ideas on how um, FFG can monetize an online platform. Now, of course, most of us say, well, we can play TTS and Vassal for free. Yes, but I'm saying if they did have an official online version, one of the thing, one of the things that that does is there is definitely a a sector of people that they don't do community built stuff. They don't use it. They only use the official thing, right? Like you have, the, you have the people who will only use FFG Squad Builder. And you ask them why. Well, because it's FFG Squad Builder. Why wouldn't I use it, right? And you could argue till you're blue in the face and tell them about Launch Bay Next and, and yet another Squad Builder. And they'll, they don't care, right? So there is definitely a group of people that would end up getting herded into this uh, into this platform right away and could be an opportunity for FFG to gain more customers. Um, maybe they do something kind of like um, uh, what's what's the model I'm thinking of where you like when you buy a ship, when you buy a physical ship, there's like a code you put in or something like that. And they'd have to have some way for us to roll in our current, what we've bought already into the digital platform, but also yeah, have a like way for them to monitor, the, the, monetize Disney them. The Disney video game that they, they have the little figurines that you put in your Nintendo and mm -hmm. and when you buy it, you dock it and now you have the character available on your in your game, basically. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's so complex. I mean, for 
I mean, for what we've seen them do with technology and the just uh, squad builder app, it is definitely a scary thought having them do anything digital, especially considering that they just um, uh, shut down their that side of their business. <laughs> I know. Three months ago. <laughs> I'm sure somebody over there is going, ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> Yeah, so you know it's definitely a an interesting topic, and it's something that I want to continue to to think about as we continue in in this world that we're in right now. Um, and we don't know if we don't know how long this is going to be. When are we going to have our next uh, next big event? As we talked about last week, Origins got pushed back. I think until is it October? I think is what I saw. But um, October seventh through the eleventh, or something like that, which is the same weekend as what is currently Worlds for X Wing. Right. So that will probably need figuring out in some manner because I doubt they'll host a system open and a Worlds at the same time. Mm -hmm. So um, as of right now, we'll see kind of what happens and. Uh, as we know, Gold Squadron, we're gonna tr we're gonna try this this thing, this big online event with the GSP Space Jam, and I'm really excited. The prize support does look really really good. Now, and I have a ahead. question about Space Jam. Yeah, and you may or may not know the answer or have the answer, and you may or may not be willing to spill the beans just yet. You've given us the judges. Are we going to have? Any other sultry voices along your next to yours in the uh maybe <laughs> I mean I know the three of us are playing, so it's not right, three of us. Right. Not right. Oh, yeah, I, got, us I got I got plans. I'm working on yeah, stuff. Yeah. Well you know, let me tell you us, this. The three of us are gonna be oh and, and another thing as well. Uh our D Yoon and I, hey, you're running this like a premier level event, so we're, I'm gonna maybe they oh. won't, but I'm gonna hold you accountable like a premier level event. Okay, okay, buddy. So in a premier level event, when you go to Adapticon, when you go to uh, you know LVO or any of those, mm -hmm. judges get top swag. Are are Mike and D going to be getting some of that <laughs> swag as? I, no. I honestly hadn't thought about that. I'm just going to be be honest. But they're also mm. being paid. They, they, okay. So... Money is swag. Yeah. Money is swag. <laughs> or, or, or swag turns into money. Yeah. That, that's money right. Money is swag. I don't have to sell for money. Right. Ex <laughs> cor correct. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, so um, and I did I did actually get the question, and you know, and, and I'm, I I wanna I wanna put this out there because sometimes I don't like to respond to these things on Facebook most of the time because you don't get tone. Um, so I'm gonna answer probably two questions that I saw that bothered me because of the underlying thoughts underneath there. So I had somebody ask me, Dion, why is it twenty dollars to play online? It doesn't cost you anything. Let's talk about it. First, uh, I am hiring. For, let, let, let me. Let me. That's fine. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna talk about it. I'm gonna talk about it. Listen, it's not free to run the event because I'm hiring people to help me do this. Okay, I'm paying for their time. There's the design of all the prizes. There's the shipping of all the things and the time from which to ship all the things and pay people to do all that. Okay, that's that's the idea. Also. Very simple thing we talked about it already is committing to the event monetarily. It helps engagement because you have you are being you're putting yourself in to the uh, into there. Like I, nobody wants to take a twenty dollar bill and burn it, right? Uh, if you can do that, then that's cool. I can't, so <laughs> so we're just trying to make sure uh, that people are committed to the event. Part two. Part two, uh, there was definitely people saying, Dion, why didn't you do this on Vassal? I didn't want to. Not this time. Maybe we'll do a Vassal thing in the in uh, in the future. Um, yeah, and the third thing was the time zone. What about my time zone? We had to pick. Somebody's getting screwed on the time zone no matter what. And that might be you. But we're, we're gonna, I'm going to try. I'm going to yeah. try because I love yeah, you. And, and to... Um... I mean, and just to keep it real, the um, since this is you know it's a gold squadron and it's 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 gonna it, you know the um, 
um, you know, the idea of it, I'm sure it came from like, Hey, I, I had lined up to stream and present yeah. all this content, uh, at, you know, all these regionals happening or, you know, at the system opens, uh, now I have to do that online. We have to come up with a way to do it. And being that the, the ulterior motive was create content to push out and have X wing on weekends as a content. It just looks so much prettier on Tabletop Simulator. I mean, it that looks nice, uh, especially when you're commenting on it. You and your your vassal just hangs for so long in the same screen without any action moving, without any movement mm-hmm. on the, on, the, on the screen. It's like you you're basically pausing everything, um, and you don't get the the same effect from rolling the dice and going up and just the the you know the the build up for yeah. you know how, how how is it going to twi- you know is it, is it going to lean this way into an evade or is it going to lean over here into a, into a blank um so it's just uh, tabletop simulator whether you like one or the other it's just uh just so much more visually appealing and better for streaming it just is you said it i don't have to say it there you go bam he's got it all righty um Lastly here, uh, before we get into our main topic of the day, is a Patreon update. Patreon swag is being packed and shipped. People at that highest level have already started receiving items. We do ship them in order. Uh, They would have actually all been shipped at the the same time initially, but we ran out of stamps. So I had to order more stamps. They came in yesterday. And yeah, so stuff coming. And if there's any issues with it, contact me. We actually got our first issue already. Uh, somebody accidentally got an empty envelope, sealed, stamped, empty. <laughs> we got you, man. We'll get you. We'll get you some some some. Uh, we'll get you your swag back out. What a tease! All right. Yeah, I know. Like, who who you thought? Nope, false. All righty. So let's go ahead and hit our main topic. And today's topic is talking about the process of list building now today we're going to specific specifically be focused on extended maybe we'll do this um in the future for hyperspace but a lot of the ideas that we're going to talk about translate over into the hyperspace format as well um now people who are watching we're going to get you guys involved in a couple seconds be ready get your fingers ready on that keyboard we'll talk about it here in a second so Today, specifically, we want to kind of focus on, like, how do you go about building a list? And yes, you could just say, well, we'll look up what are the best lists. But what if you want to build a list? What are the different avenues in which you can go down to create a list? So here's a couple of examples that we have. And what what I want here is in the chat go ahead and you guys can try, try to prompt us now we're not saying give us a list is not list of the week where you give us a list and we try to quote unquote fix it or make it better this is start with an idea and create a list from that um some of the what are what are some of the ideas guys in which that we can use to go about building some lists well the one i always start with is pilots whether okay. it's Darth Vader or Luke or even uh, Ivan Farrell or whatever his name is. Um, I always try to harness that because I feel like that um, that spawns the combos that I'm looking for, the, the kind of ability interactions um, that I can start building together. Uh, so... Because uh, that's how normally where my mind is trying to get some combo to work together um, based off of one particular pilot. Uh, or what, what do I want to say is uh, making somebody an all star as well. You know, like like this is my dash list, or uh, this is all about Hera. Um, and that way you can, uh, you really, I don't want to say like, like focused in, I almost said lasered, uh, <laughs> uh, but like focused in on what uh, your actual goal is trying to achieve when you're focusing on just one pilot. Marcel, what do you think? Um, I, I stepped out for a minute, so I didn't hear what what William said, but I might be saying the same thing. So, um, so he talked like, about he 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 hit on the idea yeah. of starting a Moving list, of thinking about of a of a of a pilot. Right? Do you say pilot or ship? 
Uh, well, pilot. Uh, you said sometimes, pilot. I mean, chassis is kind of like a pilot, but um, just more generic. Okay. All right. Cool. Sorry. Go ahead, yeah, Marcel. I, I think for me, um, usually what, what what I start thinking of is uh, is think, thinking about mechanics, like a certain something that I not so much of an archetype, uh, but uh, the mechanics behind an archetype. Uh, for example, uh, an archetype would be like um, you know uh, ace plus support or multiple aces or alpha strike. That's that's an archetype. But a mechanic is more of um, like a way to make that succeed. Um, the, 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 I guess the best examples that I can provide is just the last couple of lists that I took to major events where, uh, where I was flying Wedge, Loop with Proton Torpedoes and Regen, and AP5 with support with Leia. That is, that, that's an, you know, the, the archetype for that is Alpha Strike. You know, Initiative 6 and Initiative 5 get the torpedoes out, double modded, and, and kill somebody. But the mechanic that was, um, critical is working around the mechanic of having double mods so even though it's an alpha strike list the the mechanic that i was working on is double modded uh basically the shots that will get the most likely to end up with four hits and a crit or three hits and a crit that you can get and that's something that i typically always think about like what do i want to do what mechanic do i want to occur what situation do i want to occur same thing with the uh the one that i took to worlds <clears throat> with baby anakin what i was trying to do right there is really replicate the the control element of sorry i got some in my throat <clears throat> replicate the control element of um, the jump masters and, and the, the bump master so that's where the baby anakin idea came out of with intimidation uh, ship sensing and then the double reposition or even yeah, the double reposition, reposition early, move and reposition again to get the blocks and all kinds of weird and odd angles. Um, so it really comes comes around like, what is a mechanic that I want to uh, take advantage of and apply it to an archetype and then look for all of the surrounding tools to make that work? I don't know if, what, if I was babbling or if that... No, it, it, it makes Everybody sense. Makes does, sense. Yeah. You 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 were you were in, you were on the right road. <laughs> uh, what about you, Ryan? So a lot of times, if I'm just trying to experiment or build a, a new list, uh, it generally starts out with like, what's a ship that I either haven't flown in a while, tried. Uh, points update had it changed, so it's like, hey, let's get this going how can we utilize it um the main things to consider is that like just because you're trying a new ship doesn't mean you need that ship in your list as spammy as possible like you don't just go like oh e-wings went down to points mash mash duplicate mash duplicate <laughs> like that's not necessary copy paste, um, copy paste. yeah uh so it's it's finding like what are the good pilots? What are the good pieces? Uh, what are the upgrades that they have that are already known good upgrades that you can maximize? Um, we like, is it worth taking the um, pilot, the generic pilot that has a talent slot? Can you maximize any talent with those generics if you have multiple of them? Are the generics worth it? Um, what do they mesh with with other ships you know when you say if you start with let's say if you're like i mean we know the inquisitor is already pretty good but like you say i want to fly the tie v1 like uh, you're gonna look at some inquisitors because that's a good starting point whether they're named or not and knowing them as they are it's like well that works out pretty well with missiles and Jendon, right and it's just taste flavor to taste you know we saw will's supernatural version and I didn't get to play it, but there was also the uh, non-supernatural version that had more named pilots instead of just uh, two generics and a named pilot. Uh, so it's it's finding the pieces that support the ship you're trying to use, or if, if your ship you're trying to use is more of a support ship, say like, hey, I want to use a Sheathapede, and like, hey, I'll take AP5, and you know, what can that support? What commonly ends up stress that could still use a coordinate? tends to be B-Wings. Maybe put AP5 with some B-Wings. 
stuff like that. So uh, find a ship, and if you want to build off a ship, don't just have as much of that ship as you want. Support it correctly, build around it right, and find the good pieces that are already part of the game. So another way to go about it would be maybe thematic. I know that there's a lot of people who get into this game just because they like Star Wars, right? So you say, all right, Dion, I want a original trilogy list. Only if it was in the movie for the original trilogy because that's all I fly. You can take that might seem like a very narrow scope, but really compared to maybe even thinking like, pilot or mechanic or or you know or any type of specific um you know uh game action that gives you quite a few ships even though you might be limited like well i can't i can no longer reach for like oh we can't take uh i don't know we, we can't take an ozituck because you don't see those in the movies right you can't do that uh or a k-wing but uh, you still get quite a bit of, of, of leverage there. Sometimes it might be, I mean, thematic gives you all, anything with Star Wars media that you like could do that. It could be something as simple as, uh, which we've done before, like, you know, I want all female pilots. Or I want, um, you know, nothing but uh, droids or robots. Um, only Jedi. Like, there, there are ways to find what you what you. What may, maybe drew you into Star Wars that drew you into the game and and put that on the table and try to find something that works and synergizes together. Um, sometimes you might find some duds because it happens because you are you are confining yourself uh, within certain parameters, but sometimes you find some gems. Uh, and what we're going to do next is we're, we're going to take on the challenge, okay? Um, Ryan's been doing a great job of taking some notes here for what are some of the things that you guys have been asking in the chat for us to build some lists around, all right? And since Ryan was so diligent and made the notes, he gets to choose which one of these he wants to do first. Oh, is this from the audience we're doing first? Not yeah, the ones we audience. Kind of random with you? Oh, okay. Audience. Um, okay. Uh, I will take... Uh, I don't... I didn't... The one thing I didn't note is who said it, but someone had posted maximizing Leia's pilot ability um, for the Rebel Falcon. So, obviously, we are starting with her in the Falcon. So this is something that uh, me and a couple other people have talked about and how to maximize. And I think Will will thoroughly enjoy this. Um, I think one of the one of the rebel pilots that maximizes Leia's ability the most is Jack Porkins. Jack Porkins in the X-Wing! So Leia's ability, is after, after Jack executes a red at range 0-3, she can spend a charge, force charge. If you do that, the ship gains a focus or recovers force. Well, Jack, Jack is not force user, so he'll, he'll take a focus. But then with Jack's ability, he can just, after receiving stress, uh, roll attack die, remove it. And as long as he doesn't hit the three and eight council fire, essentially, uh, he'll he'll just take his action as normal. So he'll be target lock focus after K turn or talon roll. Um... From there, uh, another solid piece, as we know for Rebels, is Jake Farrell. Because I'm a believer in four ship or more, so we're trying to keep a nice small count there. And look, we have 40 points left. Sounds like a base X-Wing. No upgrades, pretty simple across the board. Just Leia, Jack, Jake, and a blue squadron escort which is hyperspace capable. If you want to drop down to a cabin angel zealot, you can do that. Give Jack some crack shot. Cool. And then remember here, guys, the whole idea with our episode today in this specific section is finding parameters and trying to build around that. Just want to make sure we're keeping that scope here for why are we saying uh, these lists. So Ryan did an awesome job there. Um, Will, go ahead and pick one of those audience uh one of those audience lists right there in our notes. I'm not sure if you have it up there. Oh, I'm looking at it. <laughs> um, oh, I'm looking. <laughs> oh, I'm looking at it. Um, 
man, I was, I was so distracted by um, uh, all the good points uh, Ryan was making. <laughs> um, um, let's go with um, I want bombs and mines. Um, and I think uh, I haven't. Uh, I actually liked how uh, Ryan had put it in the notes of area denial. And I'm not going to go for most bombs. Okay, I'm going to go for accurate bombs. And when I think of accurate bombs, I'm thinking of Iman you, uh, and his last name as well. Um, as a meme. As a, as a meme. meme. <laughs> so, um, I think he's got uh, great ways to drop bombs. And then he's got a lot of uh, abilities to maximize that. Um, so let's get let's start with emo. Uh, we're gonna start with the Estrada title because that's about bombing. Uh, we're gonna use a new upgrade called Blade Fuses. It's also a, about bombing, and we're gonna put on some bombs as well. Uh, let's go with ooh. Let's go with Seismix and ooh. See, now, this is a tough choice on it. Um, I'm actually gonna go with proton bombs. It's a hard choice uh, between protons and proxies. Ooh, we're gonna go with the proxies. They're just so accurate. Proxy, Slap them yeah. on top of people. <laughs> um, so uh, we're uh, we want more bombs than that. That's not enough bombs. Uh, uh, so we're gonna go with Captain Nim. What? Who is this guy? Who's that guy? Oh, uh, you, you may have remembered him <laughs> from your nightmares. Uh, I know that guy. I gave people nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, me. <laughs> uh, but it's okay. He's, he's fine. Um, in second edition. Uh, so same thing. Let's do some bombing with them. Uh, let's go Havoc, Trajectory. Let's put on Seismics and Proton Bombs uh, for him. Because those are things that you can launch. Uh, I'm going to put delayed fuses on them too because this is a bombing list. Let's get some bombing upgrades. And so uh, with the, between uh, Nim's ability and delayed fuses, you can freeze a bomb much uh, longer than it should ever exist out on the board. And that's going to be uh, this kind of aerial de denial. Knowing that at any moment, Nim could just unfreeze that bomb uh, well, is going to deny a huge area. One seismic charge in the center of three obstacles. So you have range one of each of them to blow up. Uh, like I said, it's going to deny a lot of area. Uh, we end up with a lot of points left. 51 points still on this list. Um, Where's my electro proton bomb, Will? <laughs> should we go for it instead of that it's, seismic? It's probably, too, it's probably too expensive, honestly. I mean, I didn't plan on putting a, I didn't plan on putting a third ship in this list, but... Can you fit uh, a, a bombing Zuvio? Mm, I like that idea. I like where you're going with this. Uh, Zuvio also loves bombs and denying areas. And tractor effects. Put them on the bombs. Accurate <laughs> yeah, bombs. Why don't, why don't you just go onto my proxy mine? Why don't you? Uh, so, uh, yeah, let's give him a proxy mine. Why not? And I'm going to make a, a one inclusion. You know what? You know who I forgot? Uh, now, you might want to reach for Cad Bane, because he's a bomb-dropping uh, crew member for Imam. Uh, no, no, no. I'm going to go with Boba Fett. Uh, Boba Fett lets you deploy range zero of an obstacle. <laughs> uh, so you can deploy on their side of the map, flying away from them, dropping bombs as you go. So uh, I have I have to I have to talk about this. So I I did play a game what? in early second edition where where somebody did this. Where I, I'm looking, they're setting up, and I I just I hadn't thought about it when I saw the Boba Fett and the bomb. I hadn't like connected them, and then we set up, and he places Boba Fett like basically right in front of my my area, but it worked because of the the distance of the ship. And I and I look at it, and I'm looking back and forth. So he's got his e Iman as me there, and I just start laughing. Because he basically had cornered me with with, the, with these bombs, and neither direction was good. Because Iman can toss them in either direction. It was hilarious, absolutely hilarious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, 
I'm really just going to I'm going to round out the list with a, a turn on Nim, um, and pretty much call it there. There's some little sprinklings, you know, crack shots, maybe a crew member uh, here and there. Or I guess I'm just on Zubio, uh, but so this this is kind of the basis of the list. We're doing area denials. We're doing a lot of bomb different tactics, um, but so this would be the core, right? And then maybe I'll go back and try different bomb upgrades, try different things um, as uh, variations of it. Um, but really just trying to, you know, taking that one idea and just what else can we kind of compound onto it? What other upgrades can we get to make this idea function? All right, cool. And Marcel, which one would you like? Um... Well, I was originally going to go with uh, area denial, bombs, and William decided to steal that from me. Stealer. Stealer. Uh, I blame you, Dion. You called him before you called me. Um, so I'm actually going to take some, another one that some, you wrote down. What was that? So you win some, you lose some, man. Yeah. So I'm going to take another one that's um, control mechanics, but I am going to bring it back to area denial using control mechanics. So we're going to do control mechanics and, Por, you know, no the, los dos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, with the, um, you know, the, the best people at it are the scum. I mean, you got scum. That's, that's what they do. They, they bomb, they control. So let, let's, let's jump some scum on. Let me bring this over here so I can look at your screen. All right. You got the scum open, uh, new squad. Yep. And. All right, so let's start with um, one of my favorite control ships in the Scump faction, which is uh, the Quad Jumper, Constable Zubio. Okay. Yeah, so Constable uh, Zubio's ability, for those who don't know, is if you would drop a device, a bomb, uh, or, yeah, a device, you can use the front template and not just the back template. So you can drop it in the front as well. So let's give him some proximity mines. Proximity mines in the front really hurt. Uh, sometimes he wants to drop that proximity mine and go over it and push someone into it. So let's put a delayed fuse on there. And then for tech, pattern analyzer, because it's really nice to be able to, if somebody's behind you, they think they're safe, to be able to drop a bomb in front of you, do a, a soft one bank to the back, and track to them into the bomb you just dropped in front of you. That is so much fun. But uh, he's getting a little expensive, and nah, not expensive, but he's, he's becoming a big threat, so let's make him uh, harder to kill by giving him cloaking device. So now you're shooting at a... He's four... expensive. Double down. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, well, double down on the agility. He just went from two agility to four agility. So he is not going to be killed easily. And for those of you who don't know the trick, um, when, when you roll a focus uh, with cloaking device in order to break the cloaking device, as long as you're positioning, positioning uh, Zubio right or any ship, is if you roll a focus and you have to... Uh, decloak you can just decloak to a place where you know you're going to fail it you fail the decloak so you stay cloaked so that's a way to get around the uh the penalty all right um so we've got uh one control element there um being able to track the beam and reposition you uh being able to uh basically control an area by dropping proximity mines another one is ioning ioning is good especially ioning ships that are tractored so let's put a uh, cheap ion let's go with a cartel spacer with an ion cannon and it makes <coughs> can yep and it makes uh those uh, that proximity mine uh hit a little better now another good control ship is soul sixa it's in the uh, Skurg H6 bomber, and uh, that's another ship that can put um, bombs in in a number of different places. And in this case, we're going to do um, counter nets. I haven't seen those around lately. So counter nets uh, give somebody damage in an ion. It is damage in an ion, right? 
Yeah, uh, maybe. Damage and three ions, I think. Is what yes, it does. three ions. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a, another way to ion, ionize and put out some damage. And with Soul 6's ability that he can use any of the one templates, you know, you get a huge range behind you. Uh, let's go with an ion turret to keep on that control. All right. Uh, let's give him delayed fuse for the same reason. You might have to drop it on yourself. Uh, so usually you drop it on yourself, burn the fuse, and then the enemy ship goes over it. And let's close it out with some seismic charges because there's only, unfortunately, one charge to that counter net. And now you've got three control ships. You need something to finish them off. Um, let's go with, uh, well, how many points you got? 59. Let's go with uh, Fang Fighter. And let's do Ultrak. Hey, you know where I'm going. And Fearless on that Ultrak. So, again. Um, now, you know where they're going to be, you know, they're ionized, you're probably going to drop a mine on them, and then Ultrak's going to be their range one uh, with Fearless, uh, Free Evade, and uh, they get to take a focus while, while they're ioned, but uh, Ultrak doesn't care. So, so, yeah. So, yeah, you end up with Zuvio uh, with Pattern Analyzer, Proximity Mine, Cloak and Device, Delayed Fuses, Cartel Spacer with an Ion Cannon, Sol Sixa. With Connor Net, Seismic Charge, Delayed Fuse, and Ion Cannon Turret, and then Ultra Rock with Fearless for 200 points. Yeah. Now, now um, for William, would you call that a control list, or would you call that an area control or area denial? I, I think it's more of a control, but... I would say control, because um, you're... Uh, you still have the... Like the seismics, right? You can like delay a seismic, and you know you, they they know those proxy mines are coming. So like what Zubio loves mm -hmm. doing. Um, so you have some air denial in that, but I would say it's mostly control. Uh, you're controlling what kind of tokens they can take, uh, where they can even function uh, go. Um, so yeah, no, I would say it's control. All right, let's keep on rolling. So. Uh... We, what was the next one here? So we had either E-Wings. I guess we have to address this one. Somebody had uh, mentioned uh, Yvonne Verlaine, her super agility. And uh, we can try to double down, but I honestly don't think that she's really good. She's not very good. But you know what? I'm going to go with the other one. So it's E-Wings or YV666. Okay. Oh, I'm so sad. Unknown hero was like, "Oh, it was me." I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I made you sad. Should we just try the? Should, should we just try? Should we try, guys? Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. I, have, uh, I saw someone mention. Uh, let's do it. A, a first step in the right direction, I think. Uh, and it's putting Callus next to it. Uh, that could get Callus up to two agility. No, crickets. <laughs> I'm so I excited. Mean, I, I, I read that and I was like, okay. Maybe. <laughs> well, maybe. Well, see that I think this. So here's the question. Are you trying to use your ability on yourself or on others? Because it is zero to one. I'm, I'm not here to maintain the health of a Y-Wing. <laughs> See, that's my that's my. I'm opinion, a VCX, a, right? It, it's a support ship, right? Like it, it's got to be given to somebody else. So, what 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 can we find for a good candidate? Who who is going to take a lot of damage? I mean, I mean Callus big... isn't Callus isn't a bad spot. Be honest. I, I mean, mean, isn't it kind of screaming Bigs list like a Bigs list? I mean, that's. I that's... mean, that's what I'm reaching for. Like, All right. If, if not, if not, Callus. Like you got, it's got to be someone you know they're gonna shoot at, right? But I think the big dark lighter is you're gonna have a better, um, a higher chance of staying together with the ships, right? No, sure. Because that that large base ship, like especially with the zero agility, can, uh, it's at first it just moves faster than it, and the the Y wing, <laughs> not very fast. So you end up kind of with a four four ship, don't touch me squad. And if you want to like super double down. Let's double down. You have not seen this ship in second edition put on the table. I can almost guarantee it. Captain Rex. 
Let's go. Ooh. All right. A little suppressive fire. All right. <laughs> Uh, what what else what else are we putting uh, in the? Is there? Well, we don't want someone for Biggs to protect as well. Um, true, true, should we true. Reach for like a high initiative swarm tactics, like maybe wedge. Wedge, wedge. So we can get that Rex to shoot first. There you go. Swarm tactics wedge. And we still have twenty seven points. Can you fit a Z ninety five in there for funsies? I don't know what is the cheapest one. Twenty two. Oh, yeah. They let me. They let me. But, you know, you have you have some options there. If you really want I think this is probably a better way to go about getting her ability to work than uh than going with Callus. I think it's that doesn't doesn't seem great. Yeah, probably. And then uh you have points to actually put a turret on Evan for lane too. Hey, she gets to play. Look at that. <laughs> kind of. O only gets dorsal. Uh, <laughs> oh, Iron Cannon not... fit. <laughs> yeah. Iron Cannon fit. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Un Unmodified. I don't care. If you can roll dice, whatever. All righty. And the I, other one. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I was just going to say, like, even even with this list, like, this is actually not bad. Like, this is flyable, right? Like, I think we can all agree that, like, this could actually do some damage. Um,. Yeah, I just don't. Man. I'm All right, so we, we got we, we got Will's time. Space Jam Squad. All right. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll take my random list over. <laughs> awesome. And then lastly, I'll go ahead and hit on uh, just one of the other. We talked about a thematic uh, type of list. I saw that one of those didn't come up. But um, so like a thematic list would be something like, since we didn't talk about Empire lists, uh, would be something like you know taking taking Darth Vader, right? Because that's everybody's favorite Imperial. If you, if you're all about the theme, and I think the natural thing to go ahead and pair him with would be Tie Fighters, right? That's just you know you can grab four of them. Uh, you can actually grab a lot more than that. You can go ahead and grab one, two, three, four, five, six. But that's naked. So you want you're gonna end up whoops you're gonna end up wanting some upgrades on Vader, uh, that'd be flavor to taste. I know that Tyler Tippett flew a version of this for a really long time, uh, and did well with it because essentially they he had Tie Fighters out there as blockers and just let Darth Vader do the work. Um, I mean, if you're going really, thematic, really cool. you got to go Black Squadron, right? I mean, that's not 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 wrong. Maybe you take two and three. I mean, Mix if you go back to the Evan Verlaine squad, I realized that Luke, Wedge, Evan Verlaine, and Biggs fit at 200 points. And then that's actually thematic because Biggs is probably going to die and the other three <laughs> live. <laughs> <laughs> Just like it's in the true. movies. Just like in the movie. Most, most thematic. Excellent. So... Uh, hopefully our discussion today, you know, thinking about the process of list building, going about it, gives you different ways to maybe go about building your lists, hopefully inspires you to build some different things. I know that we're not necessarily on the tables right now, but when you are playing online TTS, Vassal, um, try not – one of the ways to continue having fun is to experience different things in the game. I know sometimes playing the same list over and over, uh, like that's like a, like a tournament recommendation, right? Uh, a lot of times, like, hey, you want to have experience with it. Uh, but if you're just playing pickup games, an easy way to just add some spice into your game is this seems interesting. Let's figure it out. Uh, like when you guys watch League Night and I'm playing a list that somebody just throws at me, that's some of the most fun I have. I'm like, I have no idea what this is doing. Like, I have to figure it out on the fly. It's super fun. Super fun. Are right, any other thoughts on this topic before uh, we hit our question of the week? All right, let's go ahead and hit it. So our question comes from Paul, and uh, it's a little bit more of a of a serious question. Um, and we're we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and and try to tackle it. So Paul says, at what point in an event? So it's like during a tournament. Is is it considered okay to decide to call it quits and walk away from the tournament? Uh, is it when you can't make the cut? When you can't go even on wins and losses? Uh, simply when it stops being fun? Question mark. 
uh, aside from, of course, possible emergencies. Um, so it almost sounds like Paul is not necessarily asking for permission, but maybe trying to get an idea on how how this idea of stop stopping playing at a tournament, like how that's perceived by the other people in the tournament and how it can affect others. So we'll go ahead and just open up the floor. Maybe, Marcel, you want to hit this one first. What do you think? Um, yeah, I was talking with Kayla. The, but you, if, I don't, if I heard correctly, it's the question is, like, when is it okay to stop, to stop playing in a tournament to basically give up, right? Sure. Yeah, yeah. that's the idea. You know, I, I think it's always okay. And it's not, not even always okay based on um, when... Um, you know, when you're losing, because that's what we all think about. Like, oh, two drop, oh, three drop, whatever. Or whenever you hit the threshold where, where you know you're not going to make um, the, when you know when you know you're not going to make the cut. And then that's like, okay, that's when you drop. But um, I think it's also just when you're not having any fun anymore. Uh, and I, I think LVO is a good example of that. I was still, I was still in the process of, having the chance of making the cut if i won my last game i just wasn't having any fun anymore i got like i was just done and at that point you know if you keep playing um why it's a game you know you know if you're not having any fun anymore just drop whether you're still in the cut or not um the other thing is also um is even if you make the cut and you're not going to be available for the next day especially in the two-day tournaments yeah, I mean, just just drop. Now the uh, the caveat is, if you're gonna drop, and you know you're gonna drop, and you're not you're not gonna be available the next day, and it's a two day cut, you know, announce it early, let people know, because then the tournament organizers have a choice, and they have the, especially if it's not a like X two make the cut or X one makes the cut, it's more like a top top sixteen or top eight, then the organizers have a. You know, they, they have a way of, 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 you know, they can go and say, okay, uh, uh, somebody dropped, number 17 is going to make the cut now. So, yeah, definitely go ahead and, and tell people early. Don't just show up. Don't just drop without letting anybody know. Uh, but, yeah, whenever you're not having fun, um, that's or whenever you're not having fun or you're busy or you got to go, drop. I don't, I don't think I've ever been had. I don't think I've ever had my feelings hurt with somebody dropping but i have been upset when i'm sitting at a table and they you know it's already 10 minutes into the round i'm set up and then the to is like nope you have to sit there for 10 minutes until uh we make sure that the person's not here anymore and then after 10 minutes it's okay to drop uh you know to call it a win um so yeah drop whenever you want as long as you let people know ahead of time and yeah i mean that's I mean, I think uh, Paul here, uh, he, he's, I think he identified the three ways of thinking about going into a tournament, to be honest with you. That's uh, like, can I make cut? I feel says to me, you're going to get some prices or notoriety, you know, wh whatever your takeaway from that is, but you're going to win, right? Uh, the can't go even on wins and losses. Uh, that's uh, proving, it feels like something like uh, proving to yourself that you know, you're making progress um, in the game, you know, that you're trying to get above that uh, even hurdle and maybe go, uh, you know, three out of five, get that 66% um, win ratio, right? Uh, but the, um, the when you're going just for fun, uh, when you're just trying to ex experience the community and meet up with other players and stuff. So I think it really comes down to, like, what is your goal at a tournament? You know, if you're just there to get some dice and you can't get dice anymore, um, you know, you've, you've already kind of planned uh, to... Or what, what, eh, you're already not achieving your goal. So there's... Um, there's less reason in your mind to stay there because you've already made it up that this is why you're at this tournament. Excellent. And Ryan? Well, I just echo a lot of what Will and Marcel already said. I mean, 
it's always up to uh, every person and every day and every event is going to be, it's going to have a different aspect that might make you feel like, Hey, is this worth continue going uh, or not? And um, setting up your own goals before the day goes in can be a major player into doing that. Like if you're like the question mentioned, can't even go, can't go even in wins and losses like if that was your goal like i i gotta go even and um if you're not gonna make that goal and then you can reevaluate and assess yourself and say i do should i keep going is it worth it if you're still having fun and there's nothing else for you to do you can keep going you've maybe you don't get your goal but your other options might not be as good as just continuing to have fun if you are having fun um i know a lot of the larger events if people aren't having a successful day there's a lot of other things you can go do um so and a lot of times it's uh when we've gone out to events it's just hanging out with friends it's just as fun as playing x-wing uh you know the quote best part of x-wing weekend when we can get back to that so um you know, if you're not having a good day in X-Wing, you know, don't let it keep you down for any reason. Uh, don't feel obligated to stick around just because you feel like you have to run out the rest of the tournament, even if it makes you feel bad. Uh, it's still your decision to play. And uh, like, they, like uh, I believe Marcel mentioned before, like, don't just obviously, you know, cut and run, like, inform everyone at the appropriate time in the appropriate manner and enjoy the rest of your day if it's if you're not feeling it or it didn't turn out to be as good as you wanted it to be yep those are all absolutely I mean, you guys basically said all of it and i think a lot of it comes down to um like every everybody emotionally is different right and everybody's intention and the reason they're playing is different um, and I think those are the first two things you have to identify before, like before you make the decision to, to quit. So for instance, um, you might know that you are good at getting yourself off of tilt, right? So let's say you had a bad game and you're not feeling it anymore. Uh, if you are good at checking your emotions and you think that you can, you can not let your bad feelings affect your next opponent and you can at least brush it off enough to uh you know to, to make sure that you're not ruining somebody else's day uh then then it's okay to stick around but that's again it's all about self-assessment uh for some people right it's a it's a monetary thing right it's like i paid x amount of money to do this um i'm gonna do it like there's definitely that pe those people who have that mindset which i mean i'm not saying it's right or wrong but it's it's there um and just uh, you know, just just think about it. <laughs> it's re really what it comes down to, right? Uh, consider others. Consider yourself. Uh, why are you playing? Identify those things, and you should be good. I think Paul that Paul gave a, a a great question with a lot of the answers in there. So uh, thank you, Paul, for your question. You can of course always submit questions for question of the day on our Discord as well as list of the week, which we're about to hit right now it's list of the week time uh we got three lists today that we're gonna go ahead and uh and take we actually have two scum lists and one rebel list but today is like the day of the scum we're touching touching on scum quite a bit um looks like uh ryan has already claimed his list so we're gonna go ahead and uh and have him go first we have a rebel list that was submitted by george on our uh gsp discord Oops, did I? What did I do here? There you go, Rebel List, and I'm on the wrong screen. There we go. So we have uh, the the note that came along with this squad was been having a good time with this with these rebels. That's all we got. So basically, he's looking just for an overall like. What do you think and what could be better? So we have Braylon Strom in the B-Wing, no upgrades. Ten Num in the B-Wing, no upgrades. Uh, Garvin, no upgrades except for S-Foils. And then Dutch in the Y-Wing with Ion Cannon, R3 Astromech, and Seismic Charges. Ryan, take it away. 
So this list, as we can see, is marked for hyperspace. So we'll maintain that format. And it also is a two-point bid that 10 nub doesn't have the stabilized S foils. My guess is that was a mistake. So I would just put stabilized S foils on 10 nub. I think that's too valuable to ignore. If it's for a bid, I think we can find it elsewhere. Let's put it that way. Because I think, so you can go, I, I think base as this list is, it's an extremely good starting point. It's something I've looked at for four ship rebel, all I four, they have great synergies with each other. Uh, Braylon and Tendum could potentially get double modded uh, uh, attacks with just themselves. And then Dutch can help, and Dutch and Garva can help each other get double modded. Or if Tendum can't get the barrel roll target lock, Dutch can help out with that. And then, you know, that's how Tendum can help get his double mod for the rerolls. But plenty of good synergy. Um, and they don't need to be in formation. A lot of people make the mistake of putting them in a block of four that is unnecessary. Not that it's ever always wrong, but. They don't need to be that close to each other for this to work. Um, I think what uh, what I don't like is while R three Astromech makes sense for Dutch, it puts them to be more expensive than two of the ships in your list, and I think Dutch needs to be one of the cheaper options in the list. So I think just taking R three Astromech off Dutch for sure. I think the highest I go with Dutch is Ion Cannon and Seismic Charges. Um, with those three points, you can do a couple things. You can put Hull Upgrade on either B-Wing. You can put Tractor Beam uh, or uh, Auto Blasters on 10 Nub to help with the Stabilized S-Foils. Um, I think either way, Hull Upgrade makes sense. Those three points spending on 10 Nub, if you want to spend the points, is probably where you go. Um, if you don't want to spend the three points or you, I, I have no idea what I would even put on Garvin at that point. Nothing makes sense for hyperspace. So it's either bid or drop those points into 10 nub. Uh, if we wanted to go a little more crazy, we could drop the seismics off of Dutch and then give 10 nub advanced proton torpedoes, make them hit extra hard at range one, double modded, super angry face, and make Dutch even cheaper, again, keeping him below everyone else in the list as he is not more valuable than any of the other three ships in the list anyway, in my mind. Cool. Excellent. So you end up with Braylon, no upgrades, 10 with advanced proton torpedoes and those S foils, Garvin, Naked, and Dutch with the Ion Cannon. Next, we're going to go ahead and move on to Marcel's scum list. And uh, this list comes from Danko. And he says, uh, I've been wanting to try this since the points change and hoping it works. Any feedback is always welcome. So somebody was asking for some YV666. Here it is. We have a Transocean Slaver. That's the Initiative 2 with 4 LOM and Contraband Cybernetics. And two bounty hunters, those are the uh, initiative two fire sprays with perceptive co pilot and contraband cybernetics. Uh, great. Well, uh, you didn't see the message that I read. wrote, said, Oh, go William next, but okay, we'll make this work. I'm sorry, um, I, did, I did not see that. It's okay. I still love it. Is it you. still in the notes? I'm looking at the notes right now. I don't see it. No, notes. it's not in the notes. It's in the uh, Hangouts chat. Uh, oh, no. Don't put it there. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We'll, we'll figure this out. Okay, so Trandoshan, Slaver, Bounty Hunter, and another Bounty Hunter. I2, I2, I2. A lot of beef. Um, and it, uh, I think he's, uh, the thing said he's just trying to make it work. I saw it somewhere while trying to make it work. Yeah, you know, I, I like the contrabands. Contrabands are, uh, the, after they got cheaper, they're really good. And this is just a ton of beef and putting a lot of damage out there. I'm not a big fan of Forlam on the Trend Ocean Slaver just because, um, you know, ships that ionize themselves, you want to make sure that they can get themselves out of trouble. Um, 
so the bounty hunters are probably a little bit better set for ionizing themselves because if they're ioned and they have to get close to a rock or somewhere where they don't want to be they got those hard ones that they can um get out of dodge but anyway let's get rid of forlam let's get rid of that contraband too even though contraband usually works on the trend ocean slaver uh 10 points on a bounty hunter Nah, we don't want that either let's get let's take those perceptive co-pilots and no, I know why they want to do it. Let's take the contrabands out. So, you know, the, the nice thing about this list, and you're at 176, is that you have three initiative two ships that have a ton of beef, you know, 10 health, 10 health, and then 12. Um, that's uh, 20, 32 health. And uh, they put out three dice each. Let's, let's beef it up a little more. How do we beef it up? So... Uh, let's beef it up by throwing a Z95 in there. You can feed us, you can throw another four health on there. So let's throw a Z95 that gives you one point extra. And let's put that title at the Trend Ocean Slaver. Houndstooth. So now you can dock the Z95 on the Trend Ocean Slaver, start your game. And if uh, somebody gets behind your Trend Ocean Slaver or you want to, you know, launch somebody, uh, launch that um, Z95 in the system phase with a 3K behind, behind, you know, people, people in front of you and sandwich them or, or put it behind you. you now, and, and the uh, Z95 you know, has a 4K now, too. Oh, 4K, 3K, 4K. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's beautiful. Now, with the Trend Ocean Slaver works the same as the... Um, um as the as the uh, as like the autopilot right you, you can launch out of the front or the back uh can dock with you yeah the only yeah. the only ship with a restriction is the ghost the ghost yep. is the only one that can only launch forward right correct no i mean launch or backward not forward run backwards yeah. yes I yeah, so with this, the ghost has that restriction i thought it was it pretty does. free with them too no it says it specifically on there the ghost uh, so yeah, actually I like this a lot because now the trend ocean slaver, you know, one of the weak spots is the back. So if somebody gets behind you, well, okay. Now you got a Z95 that's going to 4k and, uh, get behind the ship that is behind your trend ocean slaver. So now you got the two bounty hunters, uh, the trend ocean slaver, just beef and dice, uh, save, you know, with the perceptive co-pilots, I guess what you're doing, you, uh, you got focus for offense, focus for defense. You know, you got so much beef, just save your focus for offense. Uh, take the shields, and uh, if you got a shot, save it for offense. And then the Z95 is there to either be more beef or uh, guard the Trend Ocean Slavers back whenever somebody gets, uh, whenever an ace gets, uh, gets a little jolly and tries to get behind you. <laughs> awesome. I think it could set up some really cool moments where you, like, undock it in an emergency situation, maybe throw a block or something like that, then you redock it, and you try to do the yeah, same thing cause, again. because you can, like, do a one forward and launch it with a three, and, like, with a 3K, or even stop and launch it with a 3K, and then the next turn just bump into each other and uh, redock right after. And, I mean, yeah, it, it gives you a, a, a little bit of flexibility. Very cool. And so you end up with uh, the slaver with just a hound's tooth, two naked bounty hunters, and one uh, Z95, the Binyari pilot, for 199 Ooh. points. And then our last list for today comes from Stephen P. He has another scum list. And didn't have any notes for this, no comments or anything. Uh, we're really light on upgrades today for list of the week. We have Torco Mux with just the Moldy Crow, Drea Renthal with Dorsal Turret, Proximity Mines, and R4 Astromech, and three Cartel Spacers without anything on them. All right, so uh, this is actually interesting because go, it's actually kind of goes with the topic we were talking about. And um, this list works uh, uh you, you make someone initiative zero shoot a couple four dice auto blasters at them uh with double mods uh dre reroll and probably a focus oh, i'm sorry i missed the auto blasters yes yeah, all that they all have auto blasters sorry oh yeah auto blasters because you uh it's the cheapest way to get four dice attacks uh for these m3as um which is pretty valuable uh, plus you have the the if they take a crit they can, uh, they, 
how does it read if you roll a crit and you're not in their arc they can't block it correct the crit just goes straight okay. through right all right so that's some interesting synergy the best way to get crits is re-rolling double mods are good four dice attacks are good uh making people initiative zero like all, all these upgrades make sense to me the problem is uh in my opinion uh is the cost to benefit ratio that's a 60 point uh support wiring out there uh shooting uh two dice out the dorsal and two dice out the primary uh i'm not excited about that that's a lot of points to put on the table um also now uh, i i could be incorrect please prove me wrong but i don't like moldy crow anymore i used to thought i used to think it was like required right the, you thought it was the um, bee's knees eh the bee's knees uh, but i think it's because it was only priced to like 12 points or something right right um and now it's up to 18 now it's a serious investment into a five health ship that i don't want to do so um I'm going to give you the, uh, um, I, th I think I did this last week too. I think I'm starting to cheat on these, uh, but <laughs> uh, they're super simple. Uh, the ideas I got, uh, and it's just like two, two different ways of thinking. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is drop the uh, upgrades off of this list. Moldy Crow gone. Uh, I got to keep the dorsal oh, sorry. because of Dre's ability. Uh, and R4 and proxy mines. We're just going to clean up those ships, make them a little bit cheaper. Uh, from there, I mean, you have enough points for just to throw a Z in there to get some extra... Uh, actually, you can throw another M3A in there if you wanted to uh, to get another ship to use Drea's reroll. Um, but I'm going to go one step further. Is that, And I'm going to drop all those M3As. <laughs> uh, because... In my calculations here, uh, that's the exact amount that would put in five Z95s. Oh, wait, I'm I'm hoping yeah, you're just copying. Yep, clone, 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 clone. Uh, see, now this is the type of list that I like because uh, we're going for pure efficiency here. Uh, most attack dice, uh, we have the same amount of health granted on smaller agility. Uh, Andrea is still as efficient as she was using her ability, and Torko is still doing uh, what he needs to do. Uh, so this is going to give you seven ships, and you can still do the initiative zero. You still have lots of modified attacks. I uh, flew Drea uh, just shooting two dice modified attacks, and it can really sing. Um, but that's not very interesting. Uh, so if I can, I want to go back to go back to the original list for a second. Let me go back to the original list. Uh, so just to kind of show that different line of thinking, I'm going to go the opposite way now. And I'm going to focus on uh, those M3As. So I'm dropping Torkoal and the extra stuff on Drea now. And then we're spamming those cartels. I think you should be able to get all eight of them in there. Oh, uh, we're eight. like we're I like wish. getting rid. You, you're getting rid of those pilots, Torkoal and Andrea. No, I'm just getting rid of Torkoal. Okay, got I it. I think you can actually keep those upgrades that well, were mentioned on there before to R four and proxy mines, and then you just replace Torkoal with two M three As. Because uh, uh, basically. Um, I think this comes down to, uh, if you're paying for this kind of support ability, you need to maximize it. I forget exactly what it's called. Uh, comp man, uh, Dion used to say it so many times, uh, what, compound forces. No, that's not what it is. Uh, I know what you, I know what you're player. Force multiplier. Yes. Force yes. Multiplier. Uh, so if you're bringing something that has, uh, unlimited potential you need to uh lengthen that as much as you can so i i would advise whichever way you go i think you need at least like five ships for drea or at least five shots right because the Lokes were doing it with actually the Lokes were doing it with six shots because they used to do the double gunner 
mm -hmm. uh, with the dorsal before that got nerfed because uh, <laughs> it was too good. I wonder, um, I, I kind think... of, sorry, go ahead. I'll let you finish. Oh, I was just going to say, I was like, between thinking about these two kind of styles on it, uh, I think I like the Torkoal and Zs better. I think so, now, too. I think William is the new Marcel here. <laughs> By because, why? No, I'm just saying, because, why? Because we went from you're allowed to replace one ship, and you're like, okay, let's get rid of this. Let's throw seven yeah. Zs on there. Uh, I, I mean, I think you can put hey. an autopilot hey. zone in there, too. Hey. I'm like, hey, if I could get rid of hey. one ship or two ships no. and put four more on here, but no, we're, talking, hey. we're back in business, buddy. We're back in business. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. This is why this is the the spacers dropping Torkoal and adding the spacers was is like the in it me trying to be within the rules of it, right? Uh, showing uh, the Z's was just an example of what probably I would do. All right. Um, yeah. Pretty cool. All right. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. I always love list of the week. It's always super fun. But uh. Yeah, we're super excited here at Gold Squadron. We got a lot going on. Make sure you guys uh, continue to tune in. We have our uh, the Space Jam. It's going to be not this upcoming weekend, but the following weekend. So it's going to be on Saturday the 25th and Sunday the 26th. Uh, we're going to be streaming all day. And, uh, yeah, you guys will be able to... Uh, to, to watch all those games should be super fun now we will end by of course putting up our poll for um list of the week and let me go ahead and get that ready while i'm doing that uh will since you're up on the screen you have any shout outs for anybody out there thoughts on the gsp space jam any anything uh i was trying to think of a clever name for the opposite of space jam uh for the uh, international. I'll put that in quotation marks. Uh, <laughs> for the uh, for the international uh, version, uh, what's the opposite of Space Jam? Is it Land Coordinate? Land co <laughs> Yes. Well, if he's going with the same price support, he's got to have the jam in there. But um, maybe the Dark Side of the Moon jam? Because I don't know. They're, they're all the way over there. They're on the wrong side of the they're on, they're on the wrong side of the hemisphere. <laughs> and uh, Austra are you doing Australia or Europe text? Or are you still undecided? I, I don't know the exact time zone in which I'm going to use. I'm going to use a, a one that's more inconvenient for the United States and North America and South America than... If, uh, if it's Australia, can we just flip the Space Jam logo upside down? Yeah. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> just keep it the same name. Just flip it. Yep. And when you make the spinning belt, just make it spin backwards. This is, okay. And you, you know, honestly, one thing, if let's say best case scenario, this goes super smoothly and, uh, and goes well, I would probably end up increasing the capacity for the tournament. Um, or, or here's an idea, or I keep it the same and I have both the champions face off. Would that be interesting? I don't know. But this is all it's all conjecture, all thoughts. Well, if you're gonna do a few of these, I mean, you can just follow um you know what's already been laid out there. And you can do kind of like um you know how they do with the system opens where they have a like a grand finale between multiple, not just two. But, right. Yeah. So something like that. Maybe even you can, yeah, you can take like the top, like the top four or the top eight from each side and just do kind of like a battle royale type of thing. Space Jam All Stars. Yeah, there yeah, you, you go. Just, you just take the top eight from each, each, or, each or, tournament. Or Space Jam. So GSP Showdown Space Jam Edition. Right? Hey, there you go. There you go. Turns out top we were each, yeah. Oh, actually, Tom... no, you had six, right? Top three of each, yeah. Yeah, something. No, no, there was four of us. There was four of us. So it'd be two and two. Oh yeah, so top the finalists from both. Well, just have two more showdowns. Top four from one. Top four from another. <laughs> there you... More future content. <laughs> awesome. So, um, 
we, we have the poll open for about 30 more seconds uh, while I do the intro, uh, outro. I want to say thank you to everybody who joined us here tonight live and those of you who listen. Uh, continue to stay safe. Everybody who's an essential worker, keep being awesome. Uh, anybody out there who's being adversely affected but you're still being active in the community, know that we, uh, we care. And, um, you know, that we can't be there necessarily, you know, in every way that you might need support, but know that, uh, at least here at Gold Squadron, we're, we're going to be, we're going to continue doing what we do so we can at least help you escape for a little bit. All right, everybody. So looks like Ryan wins by a, by a hair. No, it's tied right now. It's tied right as I was announcing it. Oh, Marcel gets another vote. I think they're just, they're just, they're just trying to do the, uh, but make me yeah. not feel bad. But. Right, right. I'll break the vote. All right, here you go. Ryan wins. Gold. Squadron. Out.